Up next, we'll be talking about food and travel. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and this is Extraordinary Women TV. My guest is Rebecca Lahoop. She is the Executive Director of the Ontario Culinary Tourism Alliance, and she's here to talk about all things food and travel. <laughs> now, you meet her in a moment later in the segment. Before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip. And you'll hear Rebecca's. Well, nice to have you here today, Rebecca. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Now, something that's so interesting about you, and when, when I read your bio, um, when you were in high school, you traveled to about 20 countries on a tall ship, is that right? That's right. I took part in class afloat and uh, I started off in Copenhagen and uh, made my way through 20 different countries wow. uh, and uh, landed in Cape Town, South Africa four and a half months later and had an incredible experience that certainly rooted my, uh, my desire to see the rest of the world and uh, appreciate uh, all sorts of cultures and certainly learned a lot about food cultures. How exciting is that? It was a fabulous experience. Uh, it was very interesting for me because I'm the oldest of three children. I have two younger brothers and I had always just had a room to myself and it was interesting spending four and a half months. Uh, I was in the center cabin on the boat. It was a 156 foot tall ship uh, with uh, seven other young women my age. And so it was a, 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 a bit of a culture shock for me in more ways than one, but certainly uh, a fabulous experience. And so this is really what sparked your interest in, in travel and wanting to see more of the world. And perhaps blending your culinary interests with, with travel, is that fair to say? I think the culinary component came for me um, once I got home and once I realized how much I hadn't experienced in our own food culture. Interesting. Um, and you know, when I sort of, a couple of years later when I was looking at starting my own business, I actually had uh, uh, a retail gift store that specialized in Canadian uh, culinary delights. It was in the first fruit winery in Prince Edward County and I love the exploration of uh, the variety of tastes that we have here in Ontario that are so influenced by all the cultures that have come here and uh, what makes a unique taste um, from a destination and, and I love finding all of those um, elements everywhere I go, whether it's here in Ontario or across the country or anywhere else in the world. So then what is culinary tourism? Culinary tourism is any way in which a traveler can enhance their experience through a taste sensation. Right. So whether that's a hands-on experience, for example, at a pick-your-own farm where you get to go and learn about, for example, the different varieties of apples. And of course, you tend to eat while you're picking. But uh, more often than not, a lot of the uh, orchards will have some type of value-add experience where they might have a tea room and they serve uh, um, a slice of apple pie made from you know their grandmother's family recipe um, so that opportunity to not only have a meal or have a taste but also learn about the food production and learn about the history of, uh, of how that taste came about um, it's certainly a great opportunity to enhance yourself um, and your experience in a culture through the sociali socialization that food experiences give you and you'll often find um, you know, farmers markets are a fabulous place when you're visiting a destination because you really get a sense of the local community. And they're fun. They're a ton of fun. Now, you, you, now, well, the Ontario Culinary Tourism Alliance, and what does the organization do? So we're a not-for-profit organization right. and we're rolling out a 10-year culinary tourism strategy that the Ministry of uh, Tourism commissioned back in 2005. Uh, our focus is threefold. Uh, first and foremost is to ensure that there's a sustainable, and by sustainable we actually refer, uh, we're referring to profitable, agriculture, aquaculture and viticulture as the base ingredient. I like to say that when you've properly developed culinary tourism in a destination, it's almost like the maraschino cherry on top of a multi-layered cake. And the reality is you can't start to bake that cake without the core ingredients, and that is the agriculture, viticulture, uh, aquaculture, certainly artisan food production. So we, we work with uh, those producers and then we work with destinations to help them identify their unique tastes. So, so through their farms, farmers markets, restaurants, uh, accommodations with a food component, uh, attractions with a food component or festivals and events, we help them uh, look at all of the breadth and depth of what they have in a destination and how they can package that in a way to express their unique taste to the visitor. 
And then lastly, um, we uh, provide platforms to share and tell our stories with pride. It's certainly one of the things that we uh, aren't as great at doing as we could be as Canadians. We tend to be very humble, um, but the reality is that we have world-class tastes here and we just need to tell people about it. Now, you, um, uh, well, you had a career in marketing. Uh, you knew marketing before you took this job, is that right? So was that well, sort of essentially your I was an entrepreneur, so okay. I had my own business, right. and uh, I started volunteering for an organization called Taste the County. Right. And really, what that organization was was a group of about a hundred different business operators in Prince Edward County, Ontario, who came from both the agricultural uh, sector as well as the tourism and hospitality sector. And they all came together and recognized that they needed to do something to strengthen their local economy. A lot of them were relying on sort of three core peak months of June, July and August to generate revenue to live on for 12 months of the year. And uh, we knew that we had the opportunity to expand on that. So we started working together and we actually had some funding through the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. And I actually started as a volunteer on their marketing committee. Um, and after about a full season with my business, um, which was closed, because it was seasonal, uh, I took the opportunity to have the, the job as the um, executive director of Taste the County, and I was with them for uh, about 10 years. And we, uh, together as a community, worked uh, towards strengthening the shoulder season to go beyond those three months and see a stronger fall season to start with, and then certainly built programming like Maple in the County, which helped us to start building um, visitation to the destination in March, celebrating the first harvest of the, of the, of the year, maple syrup. So, um, you know, that was a, an enormous success, and I learned, uh, you know, I blazed a trail along with all of the, the partners in the industry to show that culinary tourism development can be a great economic development stimulator. And in fact, we went from 25 million annual spend um, revenues from tourism in Prince Edward County to over 100 million in a few seven short years. So, and what is, you talked about the, your platform for story, for basically storytelling. I mean, what does storytelling have to do with food and, and tourism? Well, certainly uh, a lot of the success that I've had and certainly the organizations that I've had the pleasure of working with, including the Ontario Culinary Tourism Alliance, is focusing on media and public relations. Right. And so we have hosted dozens upon dozens of travel and food writers to a variety of destinations across the province to have them you know, take part in our unique tastes and share those stories through their platforms. We also have, um, you know, a very rich website which has not only business to business resource, but resources, but certainly consumer resources, um, you know, a huge database of festivals and events across the province, as well as um, thousands of businesses that are in the culinary tourism value chain. So that visitors wanting to come to our destination and enrich their experience through a taste of Ontario can find those spots, pick them out and develop their own experiences or follow something like the Taste Trail in Prince Edward County or the Apple Pie Trail up in uh, Collingwood or they could go to Guelph Wellington and take part in a Taste Reel program. Um, they can have great tastes of Ontario or Ottawa by um, looking for the Savour Ottawa icon at a variety of restaurants in the city and certainly going to their farmers markets. There's so many great tastes across this province. Now, Rebecca, it, uh, this is time for our, uh, our good to a minute. We're just going to take a quick break, and I know you've got a great success tip, so jump right in there. So my success tip would be to dream big and to never stop dreaming. It's really important to have one, um, even if it seems completely out of reach. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's certainly, I think for me, having, a, having a, even an outrageous dream is important because uh, if you don't push yourself, you won't get there. Well, that's good to know. Thanks for that. More with Rebecca. La Hoop right after the break, so stay where you are. Welcome back to the show. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm speaking with Rebecca La Hoop. She is the executive director of the Ontario Culinary Tourism Alliance. Um, food and travel is the topic today. Um, why do you love tourism so much? Well, I mean, there's a variety of reasons why I love tourism. I think most importantly, uh, I love it because, you know, I think everyone loves to discover and it doesn't matter whether we're going an hour away from where we live or a day away from where we live, um, there's always something to be learned uh, and it opens our eyes, it, it, it teaches us to have empathy, I think, because when we see how other people live, if, if it's better than we live, 
then you know maybe it gives us some drive to improve our lives or if it's worse than what we have I think it helps us to appreciate uh, our lifestyles I, I think you know people who don't travel it's kind of like living in a little bit of a bubble and um, you know watching things on TV it's fabulous but experiencing it in real life and making those connections and really having the opportunity to to be a part of any element in life, even if it's only for a short period of time, I think enhances us as individuals. It's stimulating. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, the uh, Ontario Culinary Tourism Alliance, um, is there a big demand for organizations like this? I mean, how unique is it? Well, it's very unique. It's the only organization in Ontario that's like that. Yeah. Um, we certainly see other provinces in, uh, in Canada working on culinary tourism development. There's a taste of Nova Scotia. Um, we know that the Alberta government is invested in a culinary tourism strategy for their province. Culinary tourism is uh, being recognized um, on a global level as an economic development stimulator. In fact, the United Nations World Tourism Organization just launched their food tourism uh, um, report, which identifies the value of developing food and or culinary tourism. Um, I was just in Spain this past week How speaking fun. Uh, oh it was brilliant again you know all of my favorite memories are through taste uh, and um, you know had the pleasure of being on a panel with a number of uh, of leaders in culinary tourism development uh, internationally including uh, the folks from Visit Scotland they have a great uh, great program there we've been doing some consulting with Falcha Ireland on their food tourism strategy and in fact uh, we did uh, this year, we hosted a best practice mission for 15 of their tourism stakeholders to come for a week in Ontario and learn from small to medium business, uh, business operators how culinary tourism has helped them build their businesses. Um, so we certainly see that there's a lot of demand. We're not the only country who, uh, who recognizes the value of culinary tourism development, um, but we certainly, we've been blazing the trail. We're recognized uh, as one of the top three destinations in the world for developing culinary tourism and uh, it's something we're very proud of. It's exciting. It is. Now you're working on some other initiatives as well? Well I have some personal initiatives. Right, yeah. uh, my partner and I, uh, Andrew McKenzie, we have uh, a small business called the Terroir Run and uh, it's an annual run that takes place in Prince Edward County. The concept uh, with uh, uh, wine country, a wine country run is that behind every great runner is uh, a set of good legs and a great body and uh, certainly that goes the same for a, a great wine so what we do is we start off at one winery and uh, we run 11 kilometers we don't stop and drink along the way <laughs> that was going to no, be my question no, we uh when we finish at norman hardy's uh winery we have 100 percent local lunch and the wineries that we've run past are there pouring their wines the local uh, craft brewer is there as our follow vehicle and the cider company is there as our uh, lead vehicle. So plenty of great tastes. Um, it's very limited to 100 runners and ultimately it's actually a brand we plan on ex um, expanding on and doing runs like that anywhere where there's wine country around the world. How exciting. Yeah, it's lots of fun. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. Um, so for you then, what has been maybe your greatest memory through, through food and travel? You know, it's really hard for me to pick one great memory. I, I have had the pleasure of seeing most of this province, um, going to so many community festivals and events. For me, um, one of my favorite memories, uh, about four years ago, a friend of mine who I met through the industry uh, was hosting the very first festival in her community and she had called upon me to um, give her some advice and some direction because I have a festival and event uh, planning and organization background as well. So I went to her community and I stayed up with her until about midnight that night, marking out all of the stalls for what was going to be an interactive farmer's market, which is the, was the first part of her event. And we, as I mentioned, finished up about midnight and I got up at about five o'clock in the morning the next morning to start greeting the farmers because I was told they will show up early and they did, they showed up at five. Um, and that event has become one of our uh, province's top 100 festival and events. It's the Saver Stratford event. And the fact that I could be a part of that day and that process with Danielle Brodhagen um, certainly is very heartwarming for me because, you know, I've been able to watch something start really right from its very inception and grow into something that's so fabulous and has had an enormous impact on the community there. So Rebecca, how would you uh, define success? What does it look like? It, success means so many things to so many different people and 
Um, my definition keeps changing the older I get. I think ultimately because, um, you know, I think it's happiness and um, satisfaction in what you do and how you live and um, who you are surrounded by in your life. Um, I have an incredible team that I work with. I have amazing members in the organization. Um, my success is really, they're not mine. They, they belong to everybody that I work in partnership with. Um, I have two beautiful children. Um, as long as they're happy and healthy, I think that to me is the greatest success in my life. Um, and most importantly is to enjoy every day because you just never know, right? Well, Rebecca, you know, I have really enjoyed uh, this uh, conversation with you and learning about you and what you do and learning about culinary tourism. And I'm really also looking forward to partaking in some of the uh, events that, that are coming up um, in this next year. So thanks for coming on here today and I uh, wish you all the best. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. I have been speaking with Rebecca Lahoop. She's Executive Director of the Ontario Culinary Tourism Alliance. For more information about Rebecca, you can visit my website at extraordinarywomentv.com. And of course, for more information about uh, guests, about the show, about me and how to reach me, you can find out all of that information through the website, again, uh, at extraordinarywomentv.com. Well, if you are interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories inspire you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. See you soon.